This is geometry semester two. It's the third unit called solids, and it is the third lesson called volume of square and rectangular prisms practice. It's on creatormath.com under the geometry tab. Copy the following problems one through six into your composition book on the correct pages according to the table of contents with the notes for those pages from creatormath.com. Make sure you're getting the notes. That's in a separate um, tab there or tab. It's actually a, a word that says notes. You click on it and the notes open up and make sure they're on the right pages in the comp book. So these are pretty straightforward. Let's go through a few of these. What is the volume of the following solid with side length of three inches? The shape is a cube. It's a three-dimensional shape. They're talking about volume. So I can expect to have a units to the power three. And if you look, there's only one answer with units to the power three. I can answer this if I know enough about volume, I can answer this without even calculating the problem. But let's go ahead and do that. If they're saying the side length is 3 inches, that means S is equal to 3 inches right here. Here's an S. That would be length. There's a width and a height. 3 inches, 3 inches, 3 inches. So remember, volume is the three dimensions. And the three dimensions are the x-axis, the y-axis, and we do a third dimension called depth, called the z-axis. And those represent 3D. So that's what we have here. You've got the x. This is it. One dimension. You've got the vertical dimension here. Three and three for the depth, going back in the z direction. So we're just going to take the three dimensions and multiply them by each other. So for a cube in this case, it's s cubed, right? Because it's, well, side times side times side equals s cubed. So, and maybe we do it that way is a little bit easier. Let's say three inches times three inches times three inches. And notice I'm including the units in here. Why? Because the threes come out, they get multiplied, and the inches get multiplied, and there's three of those. Right? So we get three times three is nine times three is 27. And we literally have inch times inch times inch, which is inch power three through three of those. So just like an x times x times x would be x cubed, so too is inch times inch times inch, or inch cubed, 27. So that's correct right there. Let's move down and look at what we got here is a um, rectangular prism. What is the volume of the following solid? Length 10, width 3, and height 4. And they don't say inches, but it, look, the answers are all in inches. So these would all be inches. And we can deduce that from the problem. Probably could be written a little bit more clearly, but it doesn't matter. We get the idea. So again, it's length times width times height. Here's the length. Here's the width. Here's the height. So we're going to take 10 inches times 3 inches. Notice again, we're including the units in the calculation of this shape. Remember the notes for all these in terms of the, you know, length times width times height, those um, volume um, calculations are all in the notes for this um, pages on your comp book that you're putting in there from creatormath.com. So we're just gonna go and do the problems. We're not gonna explain all the background, but 10 times three times four comes out. And it's inch times inch times inch. There we go. And so we're going to have inches cubed, good, because it's a volume. We have 10 times 3, which is 30, times 4, which is 120. So 120, notice I have inches to the third power, good, because we're dealing with a volume. All right. What's the volume of the following solid with length 3? Now we're saying 3 here. We're saying width 3 here and height 8. All of these are inches cubed, so it looks like they are using inches on this one too. It could be units or generic, it doesn't matter. We're going to do length times width times height, length times width times height, which is 3 inches, times 3 inches, times 8 inches, separate out the 3 times 3 times 8, separate out the inch times inch times inch, this becomes inch cubed, which is so important for us to see those units come into play. 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 8 is 72.
72, so 72 inches cubed. Or you could say cubic inches, anytime something's the power of three. Where do we get the power of three? It comes from that original problem we did right here where you're talking about a cube. This one right here, that's why anything to the power of three becomes named cubed because you go ahead and multiply this S to the power of three produces the volume of a cube and that's why we use the slang anything to the three power is cubed. What's the volume of the following solid with length three, width three, and height eight? So rectangular prism, notice that it is oblique and I always wanted to say oblique, right? but we pronounce it oblique. It just means slanted or pushed over. Notice that the surface of the two bases, the top and the bottom, are still parallel. So almost like we took the shape and we just pushed over the top, right? But we kept the top and the bottom parallel to each other. We are using the perpendicular height. What does that mean? That's the perpendicular height to the base here, 90 degrees, otherwise known as an altitude. Just like when we find the height of an airplane, if this were an airplane up here, you can almost draw an airplane. And we want to know its height. We don't take the slanted distance there, right? We don't go like this distance. No, that's not an altitude. An altitude is a perpendicular to the ground distance. So is the height of an oblique shape. So believe it or not, the volume for an oblique Prison is volume equals length times width times height. Perpendicular height being right here, being that's the important part. So we have 3, 3, and 8. So this equals 3. Looks like they're still in inches. 3 equals 8. So we're still going to have 3 inches times 3 inches times 8 inches. It's inches times inches times inches for inches cubed. And that says we're in the right track there. That's even how we know how to multiply out this formula because it produces a cubic inch dimension. 3 times 3 is 9 times 8 is 72. 72 inches cubed. This is called a triangular prism. It's got a triangle at both ends, and it's stretched out into a three-dimensional shape. What is the volume of the following solid with length A? So it's a little bit hard to see on this, but from here to here on the triangle, it says A. Then it's also got a height buried in here, and it's uh, fading away in the printing. So a length A, a base 4, so base is of the triangle here, base 4, a length A equals to 7. It looks like we're in inches again, so these are all in inches. A height of 5, so this H is 5 inches. Hint, the area of the triangle it, formula is 1 half base times height of the triangle, right? So if we have a triangle like this, let's just rotate it a little bit. And this is the base here of 4. And the height of this triangle is 7. The area of the triangle is 1 half base times height. So this equals 1 half. The base is 4. And the height is 7. 4 times 7 is 28. Divided by 2 equals 14. Now notice that this was inches and inches. This is inches times inches. So right now we have 14 inches squared. We have an area. But we now multiply this by the whole height of the shape, which they told us right here was 5. So now we're going to take our 14 inches squared times our 5 inches here. So we have 5 times 14 is 50 plus 20 is 70. But then we also have an inch squared times an inch. This is inch to the power 1. Add up the powers and you get is cubed. We're back to our magical volume dimension. So 70 inches cubed. It looks like they're going to give us an oblique triangular prism. We're going to look at this triangle again. We've got a height. Let's see, do they give us a base? A. Here's an A again of the triangle. So the height of the triangle is 7. The base of the triangle is 4. So again, and this looks like inch times inch. So we've got 4 inches times 
seven inches and we're going to do one half base times height. So we got a one half in here. Four times seven is 28 divided by two equals 14 inch times inches inches squared. So same as last, but now notice we have a different height. The height is the perpendicular height, like an altitude. It's 90 degrees to this thing here. So although we have a slant length and they may give us one, we ignore it and we go with the perpendicular height. So now we're going to have volume equals the area of the triangle at the end, which is 14 inches squared times the height, which they tell us is 5 again. So even though this one's oblique, and don't forget my units of inches, so 5 times 14 is 70 again, and inches squared times inches to the 1 power is 70 inches cubed, because you add those powers and it's 1, 2 of these, plus 1 is 3 of these, right? This is from Geometry Semester 2. This is the third unit and on um, solids, and it's the third lesson in there called Volume of Square and Rectangular Prisms Practice on CreatorMath.com under the Geometry tab down under this unit, under Solids.